Hey, my name is Eric Tender, and in this video, we're gonna talk about leash walking, getting your dog to heal on command. There's one thing that you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you can get your dog to walk with you because your dog needs to get off of the property at least three or four times a week. More if you can, but you need them to get off the property because not only do they need the physical stimulation, your dog also needs the mental stimulation. And a lot of dogs that I see with behavior problems, they never get off the property, already right there on the property. So watch this video. I'm gonna give you 10 tips on how to improve your dog's heel command. So first tip I wanna give you is understanding why your dog pulls on leash. So there's this thing that's called opposition reflex. Opposition reflex is a very simple term. And what it means is that when you apply pressure, your dog applies counter pressure. Here's a quick little exercise that you can do. Call your dog over, have him in a sit position, and then take your hands and push on your dog's shoulders. See if you can push your dog into a down. Or even just put your hand on your dog's head and push down. What you're gonna see is you're gonna see opposition reflex kick in. And this is what happens whenever you apply pressure to a dog. That's why I don't use force to train dogs, okay? Or use as little as I possibly can get away with because the more you apply force, the more resistance you get. So instead of always applying force, we try to get compliance, try to communicate, get cooperation. That's how you train a dog. And so when Opposition reflex kicks in, right? Communication breaks down. And opposition reflex happens just about every time you put your dog on leash. Because you put the dog on leash, you pull back, the dog feels the pressure. Since you understand opposition reflex, the dog resists and they pull in the other direction. You ever notice the harder you pull, the harder the dog pulls? Opposition reflex, the more force you apply, the more resistance you're gonna get. So step number one, the first tip that I can give you is that we have to make sure we don't trigger the dog's opposition reflex. And I know what you're thinking, okay? So I put the leash on my dog and he starts pulling before I even start walking. I know that. That's why there's nine more tips to go. But I just want you to remember that because really the, everything you need to understand about leash walking has a lot to do with triggering the dog's opposition reflex. So keep watching. Okay, when I teach my dog to walk on leash, I teach them two different commands. I teach them what I call a let's go command and I teach them a heel command. Now, there's a difference between the two, okay? The let's go command is just an informal walk. It's just me and the dog walking along and I don't expect the dog to be perfect. I don't want them to pull, they don't let them pull, but I don't expect the dog to be perfect. And by that, the dog can be a little bit out in front of me, the dog can be on my left side, can be on my right side. I don't really care. The dog can sniff and just enjoy the walk. This is what I say to my dog if I'm on a trail, if I'm hiking, if I'm on the beach, I just tell my dog, let's go. And you know, do your thing, just don't pull me, okay? Now, the other command that I teach is the heel command. And heel is where I want the dog, right at my side, paying attention to me, going the same direction, same pace that I'm going. It's a little bit more formal, okay? So I have a formal heel command and an informal let's go command. If you're ever in the military, you know what I was talking about. 10 guys can walk down the street, but 10 guys can march down the street. There's a difference, right? When you're walking with 10 guys, it's just all over the place. When you're marching with 10 other guys, you know, you're in step. So that's that's how I always tell people to think about let's go and heal, all right? What we're gonna focus on in this video is heal. Getting the dog to walk in the heel command, heel position with you. Okay, so before you can teach your dog heel, you have to know where heel is. The heel position, where is it? I ask this question all the time when I'm doing a dog training class. I ask, ask everybody, I say, hey, where's the heel command? Where's the heel position? And you get all these different answers. Some people say left side, some people say they're on the right side, some people say it's a little bit behind, a little bit in front. And so the thing is, how are you gonna teach heel if you don't know where heel position is? So let me explain this to you. If you're gonna do competitive obedience, if you're gonna teach your dog to go into the ring, if you wanna compete and get a companion dog title with your dog, you need to have your dog heel on your left side. Your dog has to be on your left side. Now, if you're not gonna compete with your dog, if you are not concerned about that, you can teach your dog heel on your left side or your right side, doesn't matter. Okay, and there's a lot of people watching this right now going, oh my God, he doesn't know what he's talking about. You can't teach your dog to heal on the right side. Why not? If you want your dog to heal on your right side, go ahead and start teaching. The only thing that I'll say is that you wanna be consistent. If you want your dog to heal, when you say heal, you want them on your right side, make sure they're on your right side every time you say heal. Now, the reason that heel is always considered on your left side is one, all the training used to be done with choke chain. And so when you put a choke chain on a dog, you have to make a pee, put it over the dog, and the pee is on so that when you give the dog a correction on the choke chain, the choke chain 
loosens up. So all the dogs had to be on your left side. That's one of the reasons. The other reason is that a lot of dog training comes from gun dog training. Gun dog trainers, when you're out with your dog, you have the dog on one side and the shotgun on the other side. So most people are right-handed. So you would have the shotgun in your right hand, the dog in your left hand. That's where a lot of this comes from. But it doesn't matter, again, unless you're gonna compete. Now, I'll tell you, I do teach my dog to heal on my left side because I am a right-handed person. So I use my right hand to do most of the activities day to day. So if you think about it, right, my cell phone is always in my back right hand pocket. My keys are usually in my right pocket. I open doors with my right hand. So since my right hand gets used, it's good to have the dog on my left side so that my right hand is free. So if you're a lefty, you may wanna teach your dog to heal on your right side. You follow me? Makes sense, right? But there's no rule, there's no uh, law that says you have to teach your dog on your left side. Do it either side, it doesn't matter. Uh, just be consistent. Now, the other reason I do teach left is because I live in Westport, Massachusetts, not Connecticut, this is real Westport. And here, we don't have any sidewalks. I always like to walk my dog on the inside, so it's the dog, it's me, and then it's traffic, because I was walking against traffic. So that's one of the other reasons that I like to teach on my left side. But again, it doesn't matter where you teach your dog. Now, the way I was taught heel was the back of the dog's paw is in line with the back of your heel, okay? That's where I was taught heel. So the dog was on your left, perfect heel position is the back of the paw in line with the back of your heel, and the dog's leg is in line with your leg, and their head is right there at your thigh or your shin. You got the chihuahua. That's where I was taught to keep it right there at your side, and when the dog is there, that's heel position. Now, we're not looking for perfect heel position. Most people watching this, hey, I just want my dog to walk with me without dragging me around. I'm not concerned about doing competitive obedience. I just want the dog to walk with me. So again, it just has to be in that general area, okay? So that's heel position. Okay, so we understand our position reflex. We understand where heel position is. Now the next step is we have to make sure that we're holding the leash properly, okay? And holding the leash properly can solve a lot of problems. What I see with people is a lot of times they take the leash and they wrap themselves up in the leash. And now the leash is all tight, they're tense. And what's this gonna do? It's gonna trigger opposition reflex. The dog's gonna start pulling. The trick to walking a dog is making sure that you stay nice and relaxed, calm, take a deep breath, have to be relaxed, okay? So if I was to ask you to just stand up, actually, go ahead and do it. Just go ahead and stand up, yep, good. Now you're standing there. Now what I want you to do is I want you to relax your arms at your side. Yep, just relax your arms at your side. Now, do you notice anything? The first thing that you're gonna notice is your elbows are not bent. Most people, when they walk their, their, their dogs, their elbows are bent, which triggers opposition reflex, you need to stay relaxed. The other thing you notice is that your palms are facing behind you like this. When you stand nice and relaxed, your palms aren't facing out, okay? And this is important, I want you to remember that. If you're standing there, you're nice and relaxed, your elbows are relaxed, your palms are facing behind you, because that's how you're gonna start holding the leash. So my instructions are for the dog on the left side. So if your dog is healing on the right side, just reverse my instructions here, okay? This is for your dog on the left side, so. The first thing that I do is I always take the loop of the leash and I put my thumb through it like this, and then I make a fist, okay? Make a fist, because this way, the leash is locked in with my thumb. The dog really can't go anywhere. If I make a fist and hold on tight, I have my dog. If I use both hands, now, if I brace myself, even a big, strong, powerful dog, you know, a smaller person can hold the dog back. So I always start with what's called the thumb lock. Okay, just like this. Now, with your left hand, what you're gonna do is you're gonna use what's called an overhand grip. There's an underhand grip, palm facing the ceiling. There's an overhand grip, palm facing the floor. We wanna use an overhand grip. So we grab the leash with an overhand grip, we slide down the leash, and now watch this. Hold the leash like this, thumb, okay, overhand grip, and then we relax our arms. Remember I was asked you to stand up and relax? Now you're holding the leash just like you were nice and relaxed. Okay, and that's where you start. Now, eventually, I just walk the dog with one hand. I just have the dog with the leash in one hand like this. But for now, I want you to use two hands. Sometimes your right hand needs to come over and assist your left hand. But for the most part, you're gonna stay nice and relaxed like this and hold your leash. And again, I don't like to use the underhand grip because look at my palms are facing out if I use an underhand grip. And what happens is your elbows bend, okay? And once they bend, leash gets tight, dog feels pressure, opposition reflex kicks in, and off your dog goes. Stay relaxed. Okay, on to our next tip. I wanna share something. I wanna share some inside baseball with you. You may not know this. Maybe you do know it, or maybe you don't. But dog trainers, they don't get along very well. <laughs> it's just me, I get along with it. 
I'm, I'm a peaceful, peaceful man. But some people don't get along with me, they don't like me, right? Because of the way I do certain types of training. And if there's one place that you see a lot of fighting amongst dog trainers, it's when it comes to the topic of dog training tools. Dog trainers get married to certain tools and they believe that's the best and only tool that you can use to train a dog. So I wanna talk about dog training tools real here, real quick right here, and then, we're gonna talk about some of the tools that, that I use and that I prefer, and I'll explain why I use them and how I use them, and you can do it with your dog. When it comes to the topic of tools, what I always say is that there's really no bad dog training tool, okay? Maybe a couple. But for the most part, if you wanna use a harness, a gentle leader, a choke chain, a prong collar, an electronic collar, if you know how to use it properly, there's really no bad tools. And if you put a no-pull harness on your dog, and if you don't know what, those, what a no-pull harness is, you can just look it up on the internet. They're popular with, with very positive trainers, Okay, but if you use a no-pull harness on your dog and you get great results, the dog doesn't pull you and you have excellent control over your dog, I say keep using it, okay? Keep using it. What I see though, is that a lot of times the owner has a difficult time controlling the dog using harnesses and some of these tools. And so again, what I always say is that whatever tool works best for you, use that tool. But you wanna make sure that you know how to use the tool properly. And there's all different types of tools out there. There's harnesses, there's collars, there's flat collars, there's martingale collars, there's choke collars, there's prong collars, there's e collars, there's halties, there's uh, gentle leaders, all these different dog training tools. They all work depending on what you want the dog to do. So one of the reasons that I don't use harnesses on dogs is because harnesses are designed for the dog to pull. If you look at a bunch of huskies, you'll see that they don't have collars attached to the sled. They have harnesses attached. And so you attach the the sled dog to the harness so that they can pull with everything they got evenly dispersed across their chest. They can lower themselves to the ground and they can dig in and pull. Harnesses become very popular because dog training has kind of evolved into where we don't want to do any harm or, you know, everybody thinks that certain tools are evil and inflict a lot of pain on the dog. So harnesses have become very popular. But the thing with a harness, like I said, is it's designed to pull. Okay. Again, there's different tools. I want to talk about some of the tools that I like to use because what I just noticed is this video is going way longer than I expected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this in two parts. This is part one. So you want to do this right now. You want to hit the subscribe button and then click on that little bell because that will notify you when part two comes out because you're not going to want to miss part two. Because what we did is I explained why dogs pull and I'm going to show you how to get them to stop pulling. Thanks for watching.